We know now what they believe is Koberger's DNA recovered from the scene, and they were able to match it using genetic genealogy testing run through public databases looking for a familial match. And we know from his attorney that Koberger initially spoke briefly to police, saying little beyond the fact that he was aware of the Idaho murders before asking for an attorney. But why not just disclose all this officially so we can eliminate the reports and third parties and end many of the questions being asked? Why are they saying they can't release any other information when that does not appear to be true? Let's ask Ashley Banfield, host of Banfield here on News Nation. She's probably covered the story as much as almost any reporter in the country. Ashley, look, I'm obsessed with this question. I know most people are focused much more on what do we know, what does it mean, etc. But I don't quite get why the police keep stating as a fact that the law doesn't allow them, the law doesn't allow them, when it doesn't seem that that's true. So uh, I wish I had the answer, uh, but what I can tell you is for the last seven plus weeks, there has been a little of one hand not knowing what the other hand has been doing, and that began with the word targeting. So the Laytaw County prosecutor told us that there was definitely one person targeted in the house, and then that changed because the police said, no, not true. Uh, we're not sure if the, the house or the kids were targeted, and then that changed again. And you, you see where I'm coming from. This is a place that isn't used to, to dealing with this kind of crime, certainly not used to being under the national Klieg lights. And so there may be some communication gaps, and, and I think we are low priority. I don't think we should be low priority. I think in our society, we shine sunlight on our system, and that's important. I have been in countries where gulags um, are the you know order of the yep. day and, and hoods in the darkness. So I can't tell you the reason, Dan. I can just tell you that I I think their strategies worked. They got a guy. They didn't scare him off. They were able to surveil him for four days without him knowing. Yep. And they caught him. And yeah, they and caught look, the guy they think did this crime. And, and, and look, and I, I give them credit for keeping close to the vest a lot of the details and information, of course, leading up to uh, the, the arrest. But this, of course, is different now, right? Now he has been arrested. And yeah, I, I guess I'm just, I'm just concerned that they, on the one hand, are saying, we need information about this guy, right? They specifically asked the public, if you know yeah. anything about him, if you know yeah. anything more about Koberger, please call the tip line, tell us it can help in the investigation. And then, yet, there we are citing ABC News for this, News Nation for that, all these different networks for, they're, they're obviously getting this information from the authorities. It's pretty frustrating, I'm not going to lie. And sometimes I need a shower after I've spent some time online looking at this story because the speculation has been rampant and, frankly, it's been really damaging. We've yeah. got a, a defamation lawsuit for a, a, a professor um, at a local school who was just completely sullied online because of this rampant speculation. So I'm, on, I'm in your camp. I'm in the business of getting information. It's extremely stressful when we are asked to be the conveyors of the message mm -hmm. to help get tips in, but then it's not a two-way street. And of course, what we are is the public. And yeah. the public does want to know, they have a right to know, but I get it. It's also a, a sticky wicket for the police to try to maintain the integrity of an investigation and to try to get a suspect in cuffs before he or she knows it's coming. Totally. Let me play a piece of sound. This is from today, Pennsylvania State Police. Idaho law prohibits any release of information contained within the affidavits. Um, so we're going to do our best today to talk about what phase we are currently in in the investigation. So with that in mind, we're trying to balance essentially two things. The public's desire for information against the need to maintain the integrity of the investigation and protect the subjects, suspects, excuse me, uh, accused at this point's due process. Yeah, I find myself very often defending the police against the media who are always sort of, give us more information, give us more information. And I'm always saying, hey, look, they got to first and foremost maintain the integrity of the investigation. But here, we're going to see the probable cause um, affidavit in a matter of days anyway, and they're leaking like crazy. Um, so anyway, it's, there's no right answer, as you put it, <laughs> and uh, it's just something that I don't quite get. We're going to get it. Yeah. There's, a, there's an avalanche coming, and it's just, you know, a matter of hours away. It's just a matter of if you get it before I do. Ashley Banfield, <laughs> thank you. She'll have a lot more on this case yes. tonight. Banfield starts right now. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.